What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So, I hear this a lot and it's, I don't have the property to kill big bucks or I hunt a small property and I don't hold any deer or you can't kill a big buck off 20 acres and that's completely false. Uh, there's bucks being killed in subdivisions now that are scoring in the 160s to the 200 inches and personally I've killed deer off five acre properties. I've killed deer off 20 acre properties, 60, 40 acre properties. My dad, he hunts a 25 acre property behind this place and then he's killed a 162 off of a two acre property below a framed house. So small properties can hold deer and small properties can attract big bucks and you can kill bucks off these properties. Now I'm going to show you a short video and go through everything that we do to try and attract and hold deer on small properties. So in this video, there's a couple different things that uh, you notice. First off, we use the use of food plots a lot. And whenever we use these food plots, keep in mind that certain seeds will do different things. So if you're going in and you're putting a food plot and you're in a heavily wooded area, but has a small clearing within it, a clover plot and chicory plot will probably do you better. And if you get an influxuation of a lot of deer, that's a big word, in fluctuation if you get a bunch of deer in the property and they're sitting here in a small congested area and they're using it pretty heavily clover and chicory is a perennial and it'll come back every year it's also heavily drought tolerant and with a little bit of rain if you do have a drought it'll spring back to life now if you're in an area that is say relatively larger if you have access to a four acre field three acre field uh, that's pretty open then going with a brassica blend or beets blend, peas blend, something of that nature will be better off for you. Or doing a multi blend of beans, possibly if you want to do beans and then go through with a brassica blend or do clover and do, and do a brassica or a late season forage blend. And you have two different options for the deer there. So you can have them in there for early season, going on the clover and the brassicas. And then you get them there in October, November, eating on the Andy Simmer, eating on the uh, late season brassica and bulbs blends. Another thing that you're gonna notice is the use of feed and minerals. Always check with your state regulations and make sure that you can actually use feed and minerals within your state. And a lot of people still have a stigmatism where they don't want to hunt over bait. And if you don't want to, that's fine with you. But if you have a small property and you want to get a chance at at least attracting deer and you have food plots, bait with the conjunction of food plots or mineral sites will be able to attract deer and possibly hold in deer so you attract them with the bait or the mineral when they come in there they realize that with the scent and hold them with the food plot to get a chance at shooting a buck off the food plot another thing is hemp ropes now i just started hemp ropes earlier this season uh, in september and i'm going to use them two different ways the way that i use it now is with a attractant curiosity spray called vanish i'll hang the hemp rope off of a small limb break the limb down, wrap the rope around it, and hang the end of the rope about three foot off the ground. Unfray the end and then I'll spray it with that sweet vanish smelling spray to attract deer. And I can promise you that I had a spot that is a 55 yard long by 15 yard wide chicory and clover field. I hung the hemp rope up there and sprayed it down and I had to retie the hemp rope because the bucks were chewing on it so much they literally yanked it and the branch that I tied it to off of the tree. The last thing is whenever you're hunting bucks in small properties, don't over hunt the property. You can over hunt a small property very easily. So make sure that you hunt smarter 
and not harder. Go in there and check your cameras and what I like to do as far as strategy wise is when you go in there and if you, I don't really pay attention to wind or moon phase or anything like that. I pay attention to what the trail cameras read me. I pay attention to past uh, years experiences of knowing where the deer travel corridors are running through and temperature. If I get pictures of a buck and he's in that spot consistently for two days and then the temperature starts to drop down a little bit, I can almost guarantee you that that buck is gonna be there again and that's actually how I killed my deer last year. He was in there for two days. I didn't hunt for a straight two weeks. I waited until I got him on camera. The lowest temperature for that day was gonna be the coldest it was ever gonna be in September and he was the first deer that I ever seen stepped out and I got him. So I hope this helped everybody guys and I hope that if y'all have a small property, it might be behind your house. It might be on a bigger 300 acre farm and you're only allowed to hunt five acres of it or whatever. I hope this helps you dial in on trying to get a buck on your small property and just realizing that you don't have to have a lot of money and you don't have to have thousands of dollars in a, in a 500,000 acre lease to be able to kill good mature deer. And if you're wanting to know any of the products or get a hold or find any of the products that you've seen in the video today, I will leave a link in the description below and you can go onto the websites and get any of the products that we used in the video. Hope this helps you guys. Y'all take care. Have a good season.